Ladies and gentlemen, look at her. Wait a minute. What is that? What is <laughs> yeah, that? Look at this her. is Ronnie Bennett. What is that thing you've got? Is that on, on your... my face? Well, I, I know what they are. I've seen them before, but, yes. you know. It's for oxygen, and because of my COPD and my, therefore, difficulty with breathing in the past few months, I now have um, a home thing that makes oxygen for me and I use and I have little tanks to take with me when I go out of the house yeah. Um, yeah. and apparently that's going to be with me <laughs> for the foreseeable future <laughs> <laughs> yeah why, why the oxygen because my lungs don't work very well well uh, yeah uh, yeah but uh, and you say it's from COPD you were telling me before. Yes, otherwise known as emphysema, according to my pulmonologist. Yeah, yeah. What do they do? They suddenly, they gave everything initials now, you know. Yeah, I... I it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not supposed to sound as bad as emphysema. I have COPD. Oh, well, is that anything like emphysema? You know. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to show you what I look like these days. I don't really need this right now. Yeah. Now, you were telling me, we, we did this interview yesterday, uh, and we had to restart it and redo it today, which we had to restart several times as well until I got it right, until we got it fixed. Technical problems. Technical folks. problems. So the question is, okay, uh, the, the question is, um, um, what are the, you said there were prejudices about I wearing that, that thing. there always are against people whose disabilities or difficulties are obvious mm -hmm. um, people in wheelchairs people with who wear uh, there's a word for that thing that I had on my nose and I've forgotten it I think it's something like cannula and uh, uh, and and I and I think that particularly with old people of which there are already ageist problems I think that there's a, a sense by abled people who don't have these problems that we're not quite up to snuff intellectually <laughs> as everybody else either and and this is what people don't know what to say to you they don't know what it means when they see this thing stuffed up your nose and around your ears or when they're you know it's like little kids always need our help you always have to look out for little kids because they're liable to run into the street or do something that will harm them. So you need to keep your eye on them. And so you look and you look downward, like with children, to people in wheelchairs. And I think that for as many people who are there to be helpful, I think there are people that don't know how to deal with that, that don't treat you like the human being that you are, as something lesser. Or if they are aware of it, try not to do that. And that, of course, just makes it more obvious. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think we should, in, in the same way as um, you fight back against uh, ageism or age discrimination in the workplace, I think we need to be aware of that and do something about our behavior well, if, you know, if it's uh, lacking in some you, manner. You bring that up that people look at you differently because you're wearing a breathing device. Uh, oh, I, you're the, what a good word. I didn't think of that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a, yeah. Or a BD. We'll use the initials. A BD. <laughs> a, I have a BD for my COPD, uh, which goes <laughs> along with my MS, whatever, NBC. I, it's, uh, the point is that you said that to me yesterday, and I, I was thinking, you know, I don't think I was, if somebody came up to me and had one of those devices, uh, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't think twice about it. I might ask them, "Why do you have that?" Obvious, it's obvious for breathing, but maybe there's an attendant problem along with it, you know. Uh, but I, uh, I, I, I just, I never ever would have reacted to that negatively. I'm not saying everybody. I just said I'm just saying that I have sometimes seen people. Do they look at you out of the side of their eye? Ways yeah. With people who are using some kind of device to help them get through whatever is difficult for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, do we treat people differently because they're in a wheelchair outside of the fact that we try to be helpful or get out of the way or whatever? You know, um, there was a question in well, there. No, that I well, missed it. The, no, the <laughs> question is: Do we do we do we act differently towards people in wheelchairs outside of the accommodation that we would give them because of their needs? Hey, you know, I think this has been around a long time. Something else I'm bringing up it connected to this, but I don't go to movies and theaters ever anymore, and I haven't for years. But the the few times that I've been in them. I've noticed that on the main floor, if there's sometimes an upper floor, um, that they leave empty places that's in the back at the row. end of yeah. rows for, for wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. Well, they had to. It wasn't that they suddenly decided they were going to help people in wheelchairs, but cities like New York said, you have a theater, the back row has to have these empty places for seats, for wheelchairs. Wheelchair I think access. that's a terrific thing. However yeah. it came about, I think that's a terrific let, thing. Let me tell you something. I love people in wheelchairs. Let me explain this. <laughs> let me explain this. Follow me on this one, okay? Uh, every week we go to Costco. And when I go to Costco, I have my Costco cart. When I come back, uh, there's always been these stairs going up to the front door, like about three or four stairs. So I had to uh, lug this thing up because it had beverages in it and, you know, large yeah, items. I know. Right about from Costco. How heavy groceries can be. Well, from Costco, they're even heavier because you're buying 36 cans of Coke, oh, 36 no, bottles of Snapple. I think about that very yeah. carefully of how much weight I'm buying when I'm in the store. Well, somebody in the apartment house, the apartment house we're in, um, is in a wheelchair. So they had to put in a ramp. Uh huh. Solves my problem with my car. Yes. So I Absolutely. love people in wheelchairs. Yes. You know, I say hello to her all the time. I keep thinking I should say thank you so much for getting the ramp put in because it makes my life easier too. But I haven't done that. You know. Well, I think that anything that's good for old people, or people with get around problems, ambulatory problems, yeah. is always good for everybody at every age. You know, curb cuts at the corners mm -hmm. that are supposed, uh, they're, they're not just for old people who might have trouble with stepping up or down. Think of mothers pushing a stroller with their baby in it, yeah. you know, or a young kid. Yeah. They need those curb, curb cuts too. There are grocery stores now that are hanging those plastic um, magnifiers so you mm -hmm. can read the small print on the cans or boxes oh, really? that you're buying. Some of them are. Wow. And some of them are putting a few benches around the supermarket, which have gotten, you know, the size of Costco, um, that are benches where people can sit and rest, for especially. But it's not just old, old people get tired walking all those long distances. But so do women with babies, or fathers with babies, the, or yeah. maybe the kid is screaming his damned head off and you need to sit down and, and you know, kind of get him back to normal. Uh, a bench is a handy thing to have in a great big store. I have a question. Though. All of those kinds of things are good for everybody. I have a question, though. Um, um, uh, most people who we would say need to use a, a handicap access are in wheelchairs because that's that's really what they're made for the ramps you know the the seats but they're easier the to walk up the stairs for a lot of yes, other people exactly exactly but what, here's what I'm here's what I'm saying at at uh, dr uh, grocery stores they have handicapped parking spaces and I'm thinking they don't need the handicapped parking spaces because they've got a wheelchair. So they can get from wherever their car is to. No, that's not. Have you ever tried to get in and out of a car and with a wheelchair? Well, I mean, they're going to have to get out and use the wheelchair because that's the only yes, way they can they get around. They need the extra space for handicap. Oh, spaces. I see. Okay, well, that, that that okay, I'll go along with that. I was just thinking that when I <laughs> when I when I when were handicapped parking spaces and I was still smoking. That's like thirty years ago. Uh, I used to think, you know, I could use one of those handicapped parking spaces because I get out of breath walking all the way from the parking lot to the <laughs> store. But now that I don't smoke, I don't have that problem. So, yeah. Well, and, and should you please remain as you are now and not need any help because, you know, now I've got these little tanks that I wear when I want to mm -hmm. go out that I can bring oxygen with me. 
I have a, I've forgotten the name of what they call this thing, this big heavy thing that mm. it makes your audience, your oxygen. You don't need to have tanks brought in every week. And then, but then I do have a tank they left here, a great big tank. They leave here, the guy explained to me that it's for power outages. Oh, and okay. that never occurred to me, you know, and yeah. it lasts 10 hours. So I said to him, and if the power outage lasts, you know, like eight or nine hours, it's getting toward 10. I'll bet you guys are really busy. And he said, yes, they are. When See, we didn't happens. think about that. Didn't think about that. But that's. Uh, you know, so I didn't either. It was a surprise to me. I said, what is that for? Yeah. And if anybody comes in and says, what is that bottle for? You say, well, I scuba dive. <laughs> it doesn't quite look like that, but okay. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> You know, uh, the one thing I always used to get uh, wonder about was like uh, Braille in elevators. Like, how do they know exactly where the Braille number is for the button? I mean, uh, I, well, I, I, the other one I always have problems with are places like banks and some stores say seeing nowadays they're, they're companion animals or something mm -hmm. like that. They used to be seeing eye dogs. Yeah. And uh, service and animals say, are called uh, seeing eye dogs only on a sign. Yeah, well, if that dog is helping a blind person, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then I finally figured out, I finally figured out it wasn't for them, it's for you and me if we have a dog to tell us not to bring the dog in the store. Okay, all right, you know, uh, that's that's fair. Uh, but gee, I wish I could get some of the privilege of handicapped people. You know, I wish I could use. I always like see. Here's here's something I do, and but I you know, the payoff is not worth it. Tell me if this is wrong, but I always, when I'm in a theater or in an office building or wherever, and I need to use the bathroom, I always use the handicap stall. Why? Because it's roomy. <laughs> Really? Uh, let me tell you something about that. If um, you've had the kind of surgery I had, and mm -hmm. there are other kinds of surgery, I'm sure, that do the same thing, when you have to use the facilities, it mm -hmm. means right now. Yeah. Right now. And so if they're... You don't necessarily, if, if, if you you know, I can walk, so I don't necessarily need the handicap stall. But if there were very few and they were all full and somebody who doesn't need it is in the handicap stall, mm -hmm. is that the right word? Yeah. Um, I would be pissed off big time and I'd be peeing on the floor. So, yeah. Well, you know, that could be entertaining. Uh yeah. You know, but I, I just, uh, um, uh, I, you know, I, so I use the handicap stalls. I always use them. And I've never had a handicapped person knock on the door and say, hey, I need that. Which, in which case, I'd get right out, you know. Well, but it's nice. You can spread out, you know. There's room. <laughs> uh, I, can, uh, I, can, I can sit in there for a while reading if I have to, you know. It's very nice. But uh, well, I, can we move on? Hmm? Can we move on? I th well, I just, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, and I have, a, I have a person who calls my show. His name is Patrick, and he is in a wheelchair. And I confessed this to him one day on the show. And he said, oh, I have nothing against that. You know, he said, very seldom do, handy, do wheelchair people need to use the bathroom, you know, in great numbers. The chances are that you're not going to be locking somebody out who needs it. Can we go back to the ramps for a minute? Yeah. I've often wondered that if you don't have a powered wheelchair, the one that they, I guess they're electrically powered, you plug them in and they mm -hmm. charge. Yeah. When, you, when you're when you doing it by hand, it must be so hard to get up a ramp. Yes. You think? Well, it, a lot of people today, most of the wheelchairs that I see, like the one in my building, the woman who has a wheelchair, they're electric. Uh, it's more common than uncommon for there to be electric. Yeah, uh, however, I just the other day at, at the medical center where I go, yeah. I saw at least two people, maybe I wasn't really paying, I wasn't thinking about this at the time, so I wasn't paying close attention, but I know I saw two people with hand-operated. Could that be because they were using the hospitals? 
No, it wasn't the hospital. You can't even do, you have to have someone push the hospital wheelchair. Can I say something not nice in this discussion? And that is, uh, um, I go to Costco, and Costco, if you need them, have carts. Oh, those little carts you drive around. My mother used those at the end of her life the last couple of years. And it seems that everybody who drives these carts is terribly inconsiderate and acts like a shit. Okay. Maybe they're bad car drivers too. No, you know, I mean, it's, it's like out of my way. I'm using the cart, you know, and and I'm going. You know, my feet are hurting me. I think I'm going to start using the cart. You know, I mean, they don't they don't ask you, are you what's your infirmary? You just say, I need a cart. I need one of the one of the the uh, accessible carts or whatever they call them. I don't know. I don't know what they call them. But but, but my mother used those. And this was a long time ago. The last couple of years, she'd had surgery on both of her hips, and it was hard to walk for any length of time. Mm-hmm. And she used them. The problem with those, um, my mother at least could stand up. I mean, she wasn't completely immobile. But if you're down there driving this little cart, and what you want is on the top shelf, I'm standing up and too short for the top shelf half the time. Um, but uh, but that makes that you have to wait for somebody to come along and say, "Would you get me the?" Box of Some people who are wheelchair bound uh, do have like a little thing that they can. Has a, oh, a grabber. A they grabber. Do. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I have a grabber from after my surgery because I wasn't supposed to lift my arms too high. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, so you know, uh, uh, um, gosh, I wish I were handicapped. God, life would be so much easier. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm getting that way. I got my feet are killing me because I've got a uh, uh, peripheral uh, neurologist neuropathy or whatever. I don't know. So maybe soon I will be able to use the the electronic carts at uh, at Costco and go well, we get out get of my way. I'm I'm I have problems. Out of my way. Yeah. So. We get old enough. We need those things. It's a good thing we have them. You know, yesterday you you told me that uh, you know sometimes people pop up in your life who you have not seen for years and years and years. Yes. Um, uh, Thanks to the Internet, those things happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember her name right now, but, like, for instance, remember the, remember the guy who was a record promoter in Houston who died of cancer, but his wife died first of a heart attack, and she was left, the kid was left as a... I'm in, cl- I'm in touch with, with their daughter who came yes. to visit Well, her daughter came to visit me and on a couple of occasions, and... Uh, uh, it's wonderful when suddenly somebody so far in your past appears, and and also in that case, I was so happy that her life turned out so well because it was one of the more tragic stories we oh, knew. It was her father was dying in the hospital, and uh, of cancer at uh, M.D. Anderson, and her mother, who you think is going to then take care of the kid after the father dies, suddenly gets a massive heart attack and dies. And then a couple of weeks later, he dies, and this kid is an instant orphan. And uh, you and I helped take care of her, and you know, we we were we were there for her. And then I didn't hear from her for years, and all of a sudden she popped back in my life. You know, and we've seen her on a couple of occasions, and I, I I love her dearly. Karen, I have another one for you that just happened to me from the same city, Houston. Yeah. Uh, do you remember Rob Landis? Well, now that's what you were telling me about yesterday. Rob Landis, I see you didn't remember the Fever Tree, which was the group he had. Well, but now I, it's called the Rob Landis Trio, what, and they have a lot of CDs, and they play all around. And um, But what I remember him in terms of his music most yeah. for is that he could play pop music in the style of of the classical, as a classical composer would have written it. So you had Beatle, him doing Beatle tunes as Tchaikovsky or Chopin or Beethoven yeah, would have yeah, written them. Yeah. <laughs> it's so wonderful. <laughs> he, uh, we used to go to his house for dinner. This, you may not, you probably remember this. And they had, how many cats? I mean, the, the house was just filled with cats. I they, don't remember. They were that. cat people, and we were I having. Must have had a wonderful time. We, I love cats. We were having dinner one night, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the table, two cats decide to go at it, and they're humping each other uh, in the center of the table. And I think I made a comment like, "Really nice centerpiece you got there." I don't have any. <laughs> you don't remember that. that. 
I remember that. Are you sure it was that person? I'm sure no. it was them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, is he still married to the same woman? or? He never was, Alex. Oh, he never was. Okay. Well, I, I, I haven't followed the guy that closely in these years. So so uh, is he going to come see you or is he uh, going to call oh, you? Oh, we're just or? exchanging email. Yeah. You know, he found me on the Internet and... Um, and he sent me a wonderful note, and I haven't gotten back to him yet. It's only been a couple of days, and I will today or tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it wonderful, the world of the Internet, and how many people come back into our lives that, quite frankly, we didn't want to have come back into our lives? Oh, that's not true about Rob or <laughs> oh, anybody Rob, or no, Karen Rob, or anyone. Rob, it's not true. Yeah. Um, it, uh, I just heard I, I, it was either a radio or a television commercial for ancestry, which I'm not particularly interested in. I figure you look at my face, you know where my ancestors are from. But um, but isn't that how you they, found your son? They, what? Isn't that how you found your son? Or he found you? Yeah. Yeah. He did that already. Yeah, let, yeah. Can, let me finish my story. Okay. Um, and uh, see, now you can't do that to me in I'm my sorry. old age. Forget I, where I hey, was. I'm in that old age, and that's why I keep interrupting. <laughs> What anyway, was I saying? You you were t now I for I forgot. See, folks, you're now looking at two old people getting older by the second here. Uh, you were t we were talking about uh, oh you were talking about ancestry.com. Oh, that, I heard the most interesting thing on the yeah. commercial radio or television. I don't remember what. They have that you can search if you're a member. You know, you pay your dues there. Um, they have some a huge number of thousands of high school yearbooks. Ooh. Wouldn't that, I mean, if you were into that kind of thing, that would be really interesting to have. What and for a lot of young people, that would mean their grandparents and great-grandparents and what they looked like back then. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. I so mean, if you were 15 now, there's... You know, those kind of books go back long enough to be their great, their grandparents or great grandparents. Yeah, but I mean, like, for instance, I'm, they, I'm sure they have Drake High School in, in uh, San Francisco. Well, they've got that. I've forgotten. The, it was just an astonishing number of thousands. The question is how they got these, yep. uh, you know, how they managed to acquire these if, if they go back that far. Well, so they go back as far as the, the schools have kept them. So, so they go to the schools and say, "Do you have?" I a don't know. I didn't ask. Them. Well, I'm just trying. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out the process. I really here. don't think it's important. Maybe I want to start them. that. Business. It's not that hard. I could do it if I wanted to. Okay, well, let's do it. We can make a fortune off of it. You know, They've already done it. Well, we'll put them out of business. We'll we'll be, we'll one up them or something. You know. Um, but um, anyway, so so um, it is that. Breathing device limiting your access to places, or is it helping? I mean, in other words, you, you know, it was you, your your uh, ability to get around was kind of hampered by the breathing problems. Yeah. Is this making your getting around? Well, then I can more, breathe. Is it more accessible? Are places more accessible to you now? Well, everything is accessible to me, but mm -hmm. it was. I I mean, you know, if you if you can't breathe, you you can't enjoy anything so this allows me to go places and i can breathe so better good better to breathe than not good well i'm happy <laughs> I, I, i'm happy that you're breathing and in, on top of that that you're happy with your breathing which i think is a uh, is a plus oh boy uh you know you told me this line years ago and i've used it ever since and that was betty davis's getting old ain't for sissies you know i'm so tired of it I'm really? so tired of it. Everybody uses it for every situation they could think of, and yeah. I would be happy. You know, she said that after, within the period of 12 months, she had a broken shoulder, mm -hmm. three strokes, and I'd forgotten there was something else, all in the period of a year. And afterwards, I don't remember if it was in a book or she just said it and someone quoted her. But you can't blame her after a year okay, like that. I, it's strange. I watched a movie the other day with her. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Something of August. It was like one of her, maybe her last film. She did it with Lillian Gish. And Ann Southern was in it. And it was the last film Ann Southern ever made. 
And it was, and she, and, and she was so old that he said, starring Betty Davis, and the movie comes on, I'm watching it, and all of a sudden I realize the woman I'm watching is Betty Davis. I mean, she was, she had gone downhill so badly, you couldn't even recognize her as Betty Davis. So We did an interview at the Barbara Walters specials, one of the last years I was there, which would be the late 80s. I don't remember when Betty Davis died. Mm -hmm. But it was with Betty Davis after she'd had those three strokes and the broken shoulder and something else. And um, and she wore a beautiful silk dress. Mm -hmm. And she was, you know, we were getting them all set up and she's in her chair and all of that. And I realized that um, the dress, of course, was, you know, over her knees. But you, it looked like, you know, that her that her knee was like this big around under the wow. silk. Wow. Um, you could, you know, just yeah. by the shape of the silk hanging over her knees. And I was thinking then how hard her life must have become, how difficult it yeah. must be. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Can you believe it? Or has it seemed I'd... like ages to you? Uh, anyway, uh, great talking to you again. Love talking to you. People can find you at timegoesby.net. That's your blog. Yeah. It's yes. what, it, what it's all about, about getting old, and also now she's kind of dealing with, you know, what she's going through in these trying times for her. And uh, I think you do a great service. You know, you really help people, and you help people relate to getting older, or in many cases, like it's happening with you, having some kind of a disease which is not positive. <laughs> Alex, it's turning out to be whack-a-mole. First you got cancer today, now the COPD. Yes, yes. <laughs> now the breathing machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as long as you keep whacking those moles, we'll be seeing you next week, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, a great talking to you again. And, uh, and uh, you. And uh, cool. go, go, uh, timegoesby.net, folks. Ronnie okay. Bennett. Thanks, Ronnie.